Well, good morning. It's good to be with you again. Today is uh, February 1st. Our psalm for today is Psalm 28. Uh, and we will be finishing up 2 Timothy here today in uh, chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We read Psalm 28. To you, O Lord, I call, my rock, be not deaf to me. Lest if you be silent to me, I become like those who go down to the pit. Hear the voice of my pleas for mercy when I cry to you for help, when I lift up my hands toward your most holy sanctuary. Do not drag me off with the wicked, with the workers of evil, who speak peace with their neighbors while evil is in their hearts. Give to them according to their work and according to the evil of their deeds. Give to them according to the work of their hands. Render them their due reward. Because they do not regard the works of the Lord or the work of his hands, he will tear them down and build them up no more. Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my pleas for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts, and I am helped. My heart exalts, and with my song I give thanks to him. The Lord is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. O save your people and bless your heritage. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. We turn now to 2 Timothy chapter 4. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. As for you, Always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Do your best to come to me soon. For Demas, in love with this present world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. Luke alone is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is very useful to me for ministry. Tychicus I have sent to Ephesus. When you come... Bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas, also the books, and above all the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did me great harm. The Lord will repay him according to his deeds. Beware of him yourself, for he strongly opposed our message. At my first defense, no one came to stand by me, but all deserted me. May it not be charged against them. But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, (coughs) excuse me. Further, from what I was saying yesterday, saints, uh, he says this, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. And the time is coming when people will have itching ears. You know, that's a really interesting comment there. 
uh, and how they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions, as Paul says here. Itching ears. Um, I don't like what I'm hearing. I'm going to go. I'm going to go somewhere else. My ears need to be tickled in some other way. Well, we we have countless examples of that today uh, in our in our society. And this is one of the, the, the places, the things where we will continue uh, to, to uh, do battle even in the Christian church. For the, the, the false teachings and the, the voices that are out there, they are many and various. And Paul uh, ex- is exhorting young Timothy here. And it's a reminder to me once again, as I said yesterday, as your, as your young pastor, to be faithful in God's word. You, dear saints, you have the responsibility of, of keeping your pastors, making sure that what you're hearing preached from the pulpit here is, is in, in line with God's word, that you hear gospel you hear law and you hear gospel there and you hear um, you hear Christ crucified for you this is really important because uh, many times uh, there are many churches today that we don't even hear that many people don't even get to hear that hear that pure teaching of the gospel that Christ died for their sins and rose again and because of that uh, they can they can know what it is to have peace with God. Well, what this is about then is what he, he's he's saying in here that that people turn away and they're doing this to suit their own passions. How many times have you and I seen examples of this where the gospel, uh, God's word, is being distorted in some way today because people don't like what it says. They don't like how it rubs up against their sensibilities in some way. So they have to quiet their conscience in some way. And as as I said yesterday, uh, then we we uh, they they tend to marginalize and push off uh, Christianity and the pure teaching of God's word. We hear voices today that say surely that's not what that meant. That was only for that time. This doesn't apply to us now. The word of the Lord, dear saints, endures forever and ever. It's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. It does not change. That means that you and I don't have the luxury or we don't just to get to choose what we want to believe in here. We don't, we don't get to pick and choose when something, something rubs up against us and, and, and because of that we see our sin and we see, see ourselves for who we are that we don't get to say that uh, that's, not, that's, that's not really uh, true and it's not part of God's word. After all, many say today, God is love. And, and so we can, um, redefining, uh, redefining scripture, in other words. Well, I pray that you stay in God's word. My prayer for you is that you you remain faithful and you stay in God's word so that we, you and I together, can know and uh, be able to to discern uh, the, the, the voice of the enemy and to know when we hear this and when it's contrary to this pure teaching that we know and we hear from God's word. Well, let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, your Son fought the good faith, fight of faith and was obedient unto death, even death on the cross, pouring out his blood as a peace offering between you and us. Keep us faithful unto death so we may receive the crown of righteousness that the righteous judge will reward us with, reward us with on that day, having waited in hope and love for his appearing. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And just, uh, I forgot to mention, catechetical review. Let's take a look at that. This last paragraph that we find in the third article, the explanation on sanctification, on the work of the Holy Spirit. 
It says this, on the last day he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. And then we end these explanations always with, this is most certainly true. Is it most certainly true because it's here in the small catechism? Dear saints, it's most certainly true because these are the words that we find in God. These, these are the holy scriptures of God's word that we know to be true. And, and it's true and certain for us. We know that he is always with us and he will never leave us nor forsake us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, dear saints, I pray that you have a, a great day, and I will see you again tomorrow.